So today we are going to talk about how to approach a crying baby. Crying is a sign of life. The first thing when a baby is born is that they cry. And that's why we say that a child who cries has got life in him. So crying is very natural for small uh, babies and even for infants. And uh, nature has been kind enough that, you know, the first form of communication in life is through crying. Now, as far as crying in the baby is concerned, because it's so natural, most of the time the parents, they do know why their child is crying. Because crying, as I told you, is a sign of communication. And most of the parents can cope with it very well. But occasionally, and once in a while, the baby's crying becomes problematic to the extent that the parents, they go nuts. They have no other option uh, than to bring their babies to the emergency departments to see what's wrong with them. And usually, sometimes, it also becomes a challenge for the clinician to find out why the baby is crying. Because crying has got so many reasons that uh, it requires a systemic approach, going through the history and going through a systemic examination to find out why a child is excessively crying. So, first things first, if you don't know me or if you, have a, if you haven't met, my name is Dr. Sayed Kazmi and I'm a pediatrician. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. And if you like my videos, please uh, give me a thumbs up and press the bell notification icon. So whenever I upload a new video, you're always on board with me. Okay, so let's talk, uh, talk about the uh, crying children. Now, kids can cry for a variety of different reasons. There is a myriad of different conditions that can cause a baby to cry excessively. But we can group them together. Uh, generally, the, there are five groups of uh, different reasons that can make the baby cry. Uh, one thing most important is infection. Different types of infections can make the baby cry, so it's important to rule out infections. More important or more common than that is the gastrointestinal causes. Majority of the babies would cry because there would be some problem with their gastrointestinal tract. And again, we will go through those reasons, what are the then we have got some surgical reasons which you would never like or want to miss because surgical conditions can be life-threatening if you don't recognize them well in time and can have detrimental consequences. And then there are a few other groups like the general discomfort in which the baby is simply not feeling easy because of the ambience, because of the clothing, because of different reasons and they would be crying because of that. And then there is a miscellaneous group which includes all other causes which cannot be grouped in the other ones. So. Let's start with the infection one. Now the infection, uh, most of the uh, common uh, infections like the upper respiratory tract infection, especially if the infection is in the ears or tightest media can build up can lead to build up of pressure uh, in the middle ears and that can cause a lot of pain to the baby so he can cry and you might find a fever in that particular type of illness and especially if the baby is tugging on the ears and you know, is moving his head side to side, that might be an indication that the child might have something wrong with the ears and it's uh, prudent to check their ears through an otoscopy. So otitis media, upper respiratory tract infection is an important cause of uh, a crying baby with fever. Other uh, infective reasons of a baby to cry is urinary tract infection. Obviously there are no other signs in urinary tract infection but because of the infection the baby is in pain so they are crying. So UTI, so it's important if you don't find us uh, an, uh, any sign then it's important to check their urine for the presence of any infection. Then similarly, other types of infection like a generalized sepsis in which the baby would be very ill, that can also cause excessive crying, though that crying would be more shrill or a weak cry rather than a strong cry. The babies can cry because if there is a problem or infection with their joints or with their bones, osteomyelitis or arthritis, septic arthritis especially, uh, then they would be crying and usually they would not be moving uh, that particular limb where the infection might be present. So, in general, any type of infection or infective process when there is a fever can cause uh, pain to the baby and obviously when they are in pain, they will cry. Then coming down to gastrointestinal uh, reasons. Gastrointestinal reasons are very common. I think by and large, these are the most common cause of a crying baby. And the most important one here, uh, which is worth mentioning, is uh, what we call as infantile uh, colic. So infantile colic is basically a condition of uh, unknown etiology. I mean, it was initially thought that it's probably caused by trapped wind and po possibly spasm of the intestinal muscles. Uh, but latest research has um, 
thrown this theory out of the window and we say basically it is multi uh, factorial in nature somehow the nerve endings in intestines uh, are very sensitive and they can generate impulses for a variety of reasons uh, which can cause you know perception of pain in the higher centers and uh, these babies usually if you see they are very fussy especially in the evening they draw their legs up they might be very red in the face they try to strain so that might uh, lead to this belief that probably there's something wrong in the intestines and at the same time uh, if this is quite common so the working definition of infantile colic is if the baby has been crying for more than three hours for more than three days for more than three weeks then we classify it as infantile colic because there is no test to rule it in so that's why we use a definition it's a clinical diagnosis so three 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 rules so crying for more than three hours for more than three days for more than three weeks that is what we call infantile colic and it's most common between the age of three weeks to three months though it can be present at birth as well so if a baby is three or four days old and he starts crying that doesn't mean that you have ruled out infantile colic simply because it starts at three weeks of age a baby at birth can have infantile colic again most of the time if you do the examination everything else is fine baby is thriving well his numbers are fine it's just that he's crying and he's crying mostly in the evening though sometimes they can also cry in the morning as well the other thing is that as far as treatment of this condition is concerned there is no treatment for it i mean people try different things some people try cry water some people try uh, uh, colic drops like infocol and for some it works for some it doesn't the only one thing that usually works is that white noise if it is close to the baby that somehow soothes them out so for example if a baby cot is placed to, close to a running washing machine you will see after some time their pain eases out and they are more comfortable simply if a baby is made to sit in a baby car seat and the engine is running then also you will see that after some time the baby calms down so somehow this white noise a humming white noise actually soothes out so whether it is something relating with a sort of a biofeedback or meditative effects of these humming sounds or whether it soothes out or not we don't know but somehow it works for some parents the other thing uh, which can cause a um, lot of uh, pain in our crying baby is cow milk protein intolerance so cow milk protein allergy cow milk protein intolerance milk protein allergy it's known by different names it's a spectrum of disorder in which the baby cannot digest milk proteins now why they can't digest different theories for that one theory says that somehow because the intestinal epithelium is not mature and the spaces between the uh, epithelial cells or the gaps between the epithelial cells are a bit wide because of immaturity immaturity not like the baby is premature but simply because the uh, system is immature these proteins can like cross into the body go inside and uh, in, into the blood and then invoke an antibody response and that antibodies then you know can attack the luminal cells and cause a severe uh, pain because it activates the uh, nerve endings whenever the baby takes milk and it can lead to another you know, myriad uh, types of uh, signs and symptoms so these babies they cry a lot uh, they usually have got vomiting uh, they usually pass uh, loose uh, liquid stools sometimes that stool can also cause uh, can can have blood in it sometimes they might be suffering from constipation they might have skin rashes here and there so these types of uh, non specific symptoms like diarrhea Uh, crying lo a lot blood in the stools vomiting constipation rashes unsettled this type usually fixes what we call as the definition of uh, milk protein allergy again there is uh, no definitive diagnosis at a young age so usually what the clinicians do like for practical reasons they would simply put the baby on um, cow milk protein free formula so extensively hydrolyzed formulas Uh, which have got oligopeptides sometimes even that doesn't work so they might have to go on to a very elemental like amino acid formula so that can also be used so different types of uh, you know approaches can be made as far as addressing common protein allergy is uh, is is concerned and uh, for some people again it might work for in severe cases it might not work so then the alternatives have to be tried 
Similarly, the third important uh, gastrointestinal reason for a baby excessively crying is gastroesophageal reflux. Now, all babies have got reflux to some extent because of the lax lower esophageal sphincter. So there is a passive regurgitation of the stomach contents back into the esophagus. For mild, uh, in mild re reflux, the baby is not that much symptomatic. They might like post it a little bit every now and then, but in moderate and severe reflux, the baby would be having constant throwing up of the milk products and because sometimes the acid comes back that can cause pain and the baby cries a lot. These types of babies would be crying after feed or during feed. They are very much fussy and again we have to treat them with different uh, types of things. Usually we try Gaviscon as a first step. A uh, total of six sashes per 24 hours can be given mixed in the feeds. If that doesn't work then we have got like an anitidine or omeprazole that can be tried. If, if that is not working then we have to go for like 24 hour pH uh, es esophageal pH monitoring and some other like invasive procedures so that is usually in the domain of the pediatric gastroenterologist uh, but nevertheless for majority for practically the majority of the kids they would either settle on gavascon or on uh, on uh, omeprazole or uh, ranitidine or maybe on anti-reflux formulas which just thicken the thing so that's not easy uh, for the um, for the formula to passively regurgitate back surgical reasons are important things which you should not be uh, missing Intussusception is one 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 big cause of a crying baby. Usually, more common in babies age somewhere between three months to two years. These babies they would be well, and all of a sudden they would start crying, and they have got like episodes of crying where they would cry, then they would become they would be fine in between, then they start crying again. So it's very difficult to like you know differentiate these types of things from uh, colic or from reflux. But usually, if you see the pattern as far as the disease progresses the 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 pain free period interval that decreases so the baby even when he's not crying he's quite pale with legs drawn up and if you do uh, abdominal examination in some cases you might even find a sort of a vague mass in the in the in the, in the abdomen so to start with they may be crying and you know then fine then crying becoming pale in between trying the legs up in the later stages they can have vomiting initially non-bilious then can have later on become bilious and they can also have uh, red currant jelly stools which is more of academic thing it's usually occurs in the late stages of the disease and uh, it's not that common as is written in the textbooks uh, nevertheless if that is a condition that is a surgical emergency because uh, air contrast enema has to be given which is not only diagnostic but therapeutic but most here in UK, most of the time, they have to undergo an uh, ultrasound uh, to diagnose that. And uh, once it is diagnosed on ultrasound, which usually gives a donut appearance, then they have to be given air contrast enema, which actually uh, reduces this condition. Some of these can have recurrences as well, but that's not that common. The third, uh, the fourth group is what we call as the general discomfort. And general discomfort can occur because of a variety of the reasons. So if a baby has been like wrapped up a lot, so obviously his body is hot, he may be feeling uncomfortable, they would cry. Or if the baby has got a dirty nappy, which is like causing him discomfort in the nappy area, they would cry a lot. Or if they are simply hungry, they would cry for that reason. Or sometimes they might have got eczematous rashes, which hurts or which itch. Due to that, they can cry. And similarly, then there are a few um, miscellaneous reasons. Miscellaneous reasons are sometimes uh, babies have got nails and as they are wiggling around, they can scratch their eyes, causing corneal abrasions. That babies would be crying a lot with, you know, eyes, you know, forcefully closed. And it's not easy to pick it up unless until like you put numbing drops in their eyes and do a fluorescein uh, testing to see if there is any corneal abrasion. Uh, some babies can cry when they, they've got teething, so teething is a painful procedure that can also cause crying in babies. Uh, most of the babies after immunization, first set of immunization, even second or third, they can cry a lot. So they have got a bit, bit of fever and the localized pain because of the um, adjuvants which are used in the uh, vaccine, that can cause a lot of pain. So that painful condition along with the in, uh, kicking in of the immune system. Uh, can cause a lot of irritability and fever and uh, a child can be crying um, for hours because of uh, what we call as post humanization syndrome sort of a thing. Sometimes babies, male babies can cry if uh, they've got a hernia that becomes incarcerated. So that's why it's very important to do a groin examination and also look at the scrotum because neonatal torsion can also give rise to pain and the baby would be crying uh, inconsolably. So uh, genital examination is very important. Look for any uh, hernias 
look for any testicular swellings or color changes over there. This is a very important part of the examination. Uh, moving on, uh, how to approach these kids? History. So in history, you ask about the, uh, the symptomatology, whether it's an acute one or a chronic one. Acute is mostly infective. Chronic could be because of colic, uh, reflux. You ask about the type of cry. Uh, a child who has gotten uh, like unconsolable cry which increases when he's being handled might be because of child abuse or fracture or like my severe infections like meningitis patterns of crying you know crying before being fed and then you know becoming consoled might mean the baby is hungry uh, similarly if the baby uh, is crying more after the feed uh, thing uh, that might be because of milk protein allergies if he is crying with 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 along with uh, throwing uh, up of the milk that might be because of um, gastroesophageal reflux so uh, and if he's got like episodes of crying and this fail in between that might be because of it to suction so history can give you an idea about what would be the likely causes of crying so history is very 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 important Similarly, additional features in history for whether the child has been recently immunized or that can also that that can tell you that this crying is because of of, of uh, post vaccination syndrome and uh, so it's important so again the important thing here is the history history has to be taken very meticulously because in most cases it will give you a clue what's wrong with the baby then as far as examination is concerned after we have taken the, the, the history the baby should be completely undressed and you should ha examine him from head to toe because you have to see if there's a bulging fontanelle whether there is any corneal abrasion whether there is any bruising marks on the body, whether there is any hernia, any torsion, whether there's any like the infected patches of eczema, so on and so forth. So it's important that you examine from head to toe and from front to back. So it, general examination would include your vitals, that includes respiratory rate, heart rate, uh, capillary refill time, etc., etc. You also look inside the mouth to see if there is an oral thrash or oral ulcers, which might be contributing to the pain. You look at the fontanelle as if it is bulging, but that would uh, suggest meningitis. You look for, for uh, presence of horizontal symptoms. You look into the ears if there are any bulging tympanic membranes that would uh, actually point towards otitis media. Look at the chest if there are recession that might mean that the child has got bronchiolitis or chest infection. You look at the limbs if the limbs are, uh, if any of the limbs or the joints are swollen or showing any signs of bruise or the child cries when the limbs are being handled that might mean that there's either an infection or a fracture there. You also look at the digits to see if there is any hair tourniquet. Uh, which might be causing pain so because kids fingers are very small and so sometimes uh, like a sort of a circle of uh, hair might you know circle around the finger causing hair tonic which is very painful condition so do a complete examination general as well as systemic examination that would give you a lot of clues if any then investigation as far as the investigation is concerned now the investigations uh, again would depend on your history and physical exam not every child needs to be uh, investigated properly but obviously if a child has got a bulging fontanelle and if you think there is some infective process going on then obviously you would do a sepsis screen so you might have to do a full blood count you look at the quad screen lfts you might have to do even a lumbar puncture chest x-ray so on and so forth if you are suspecting an abdominal uh, cause like intussusception or uh, malrotation of the bowel something you might have to do uh, abdominal x-ray to look for air fluid levels or any free gas in the peritoneum or you might have to do an ultrasound to um, rule out intersusception. Similarly, if you are suspecting that there's something right, might be wrong with the bone, something you might have to do an X-ray or bone scan to look for osteomyelitis or fractures. And uh, if you are suspecting non-accidental injury, the history is dodgy, parents are known to the social services, or there is history of domestic violence, then you probably need to admit into a skeletal survey. Uh, so these are uh, the the things that you would do as far as your clinical approach uh, to a crying baby is uh, concerned but believe in that the most common non-organic cause of a crying baby is colic and i told you that colic is very very common it can occur anywhere between three weeks to three months but can also occur at uh, the time of uh, birth as well and there is no treatment for it uh, gastroesophageal reflux i told you this is also very common and is because of a lax lower esophageal sphincter these babies can have even from mild positive to severe vomiting and sometimes they can have a bit of aspiration as well so they might become chronic visit in such a case so they are usually crying and as i told you that we do have treatment in the form of gaviscon or milk thickeners anti-reflux formulas or 
ranitidine uh, and uh, omeprazole. Tau milk protein intolerance is another spectrum of illness which can uh, range from very mild diarrhea to a florid uh, milk protein allergy where the child has got rashes, vomiting, uh, blood in the stools, diary alternating with constipation, crying and different types of reasons uh, for, for crying. Uh, in that case, the mom is breastfeeding. She has to go on a milk-free diet. If not, then the baby has to be put on a hydrolyze or on a uh, elemental formula. Uh, again, some other important cause of crying baby, as I told you, infections, surgical causes, fractures, child abuse, and miscellaneous. So I, we have already discussed that. You should keep these in mind. So you sh you must know what are the groups of uh, different reasons that can cause excessive crying. And just keep it in mind. And as I told you, that the history and examination would guide you uh, towards that particular bracket uh, where the child might have any cause within that, that that particular group. So it is important uh, to take a meticulous history and do a complete head-to-toe examination. So as far as management of crying babies are concerned, you always manage underlying conditions. So it's a surgical condition, you treat that with infection, you treat it with antibiotics or whatever you want to treat them with. It's a viral one. In many times, the, the, the cause would not be obvious. So in that case, you can give painkillers like uh, analgesia, paracetamol, uh, till that causes symptoms. Obviously, if a child is crying, you will give them some painkillers to uh, soothe them down. If they're not taking orally, you can give rectal paracetamol uh, in appropriate doses so that the child calms down. In cases where examination and you have done investigation, they are normal and parents have got a high anxiety level, then in that case, baby should be admitted. Why you should, would be admitting when everything is normal is simply for observation to see. Sometimes things simply emerge. At that point in time, everything would be would be normal, but over a period of next 12 to 24 hours, thing would emerge. So you want to observe for any emerging condition, and you also want to observe child-parent interaction because if there is too much frustration with the parents, the baby is not. So there is always a chance that they might harm the baby. So you look at the child-parent interaction, and uh, you also want to look for any emerging. So that is um, an area, gray area, where reasons are not that much clear so you would and you have done investigations and everything is normal still you would admit them to see if there is any emergent cause number one number two how to, to see how the parent and child interacts and if there is any issue over there then you can address that so hopefully you have um, understood uh, this uh, the, these cause of uh, crying baby in this small video lecture and uh, if you have got any questions or queries you can put it down in the comment section below and i will answer them have a good day bye bye i'm signing off